How's it going? Philip Clark here at Wizard World LA. I'm here at the Atomic Basement in Comic Bug Boots, and I am talking to the the man in charge, Mike Wellman. The high kick artist extraordinaire. Uh, now, writer, you're mainly a writer creator, right, Mike? Mainly, yeah. When, yeah, well, yes, I, I am a writer creator. And a peeping Tom. And a peeping Tom. Just so um, we know. And I also run a comic. I guess I'm mainly a retailer, I guess. Mainly. If you, if you count financially, mainly a retailer. Uh, you're making your bread as a retailer, but now you're starting to venture into creating, right? I've been doing creating. I've been writing comics for about five, six years now, yeah. Okay. And uh, and you're doing Mac Afro and Gone South, right? Can you give us a brief uh, uh, synopsis on what those are about? Sure. Mac Afro, I created a uh, first series written by Troy Luter, art by Luke Lazzali, the new one shot. It's written by David Badass Mofo Walker and illustrated by... That man there, Rafael Navarro. And we'll get back to him later. Yeah, we'll talk about him soon enough. Then uh, my second series, which was kind of an apology to the ladies from the misogyny of my first series, <laughs> called Gone South. And uh, two New York City girls on the run wind up in this redneck town, North Carolina, which is where I grew up. And uh, you know, things go from bad to worse. There's a spoiler in there. If you don't want a spoiler, turn off your computer for a minute. They're vampires. Uh, we also did an anti-Bush comic because we hate George Bush. And uh, hey, Louis Gossett Jr., how you doing, sir? All right. And so does Louis Gossett Jr. Um, we love Louis Gossett Jr. We love Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, yeah, we did an anti-Bush comic. Joshua Dysart wrote it. Brad Rader illustrated it. And we got all sorts of other shit. Pipeline, Star Trek, uh, a secret project that I'm ghostwriting under the name Brian Michael Bendis, and, <laughs> and some other stuff. So you say you've been writing for about five years. Uh, who would you say are your creative influences? Creative influences. Well, they're all over the map. Um, I, uh, Robert Rodriguez is, uh, is a very big influence. I've eaten a lot of schlock and I shit a lot of schlock, you know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, B-movies, uh, uh, God, influences. Artists that I like, Paul Galassi, the kind of stuff he does. Uh, I'm a huge, as 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 you know, Phil. I'm a huge fan of Battlestar Galactica. So you'll 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 smell flourishes of Battlestar Galactica in my work. Um, a lot of film directors, a lot of uh, uh, uh huge, huge fan of that. Uh, vampires. I'm more about the icons, you know, and, and blending and, and genre and, and just kind of putting it in a big smoothie blender and mixing it up and seeing what you get. Right. Rather than, like, I want to be like this guy or I want to be the next, you know, Ed Brubaker this week. Because you, you can't. You can't be that guy. He's that guy. So, but, yeah. Now, comics aren't a hugely profitable medium when you're starting out. I mean, you run a shop in uh -huh. addition to creating. I mean, how, how much of a balance is there between, like, your day gig and, and you creating comics? Well, I uh, I was asked recently to I'm I'm going I'm to be doing a, a column on Broken Frontiers, and I realized that uh, I have a unique perspective on the industry because I, I've read uh, Brian Hibbs' uh, columns, Tilting at Windmills, which you know Brian Hibbs, very angry sort of retailer, but he does actually accomplish things. He gets things done on retailer's behalf. Uh, but he wrote this article about independent comics and why he doesn't he stocks them, but he doesn't go out of his way for them and all this sort of thing. And he was saying. You know, because they don't come out on time, and they don't, they never finish, and I understand from the indie publisher's perspective why that happens, you know, and it's sometimes you start things with the best of intentions. Um, I always, when I start a new project, I always make sure that if I don't sell a single copy, I'll be able to finish it. Like that's why Mac Afro was a four-issue miniseries, right? And you see these these guys coming up with, you know, we're gonna do a 36-issue thing. It's like an epic thing. It's fine and dandy, but how real? Because, you know, um, the one person I've seen that's just pulling that off is Arvin Nelson at uh, Rex Mundy. Right. The only person, in, and uh, like when I met them before their book came out, and they said they were doing, you know, yeah, 36 issue series. And I said, you guys are nuts. And inside my head, I said they're never going to do it. And it appears he's proving me wrong. But um, so 
I can kind of like look at things from that perspective and hopefully offer advice to indie publishers and offer sort of a mind broadening perspective for retailers uh, in this column that I'll have out on BrokenFrontiers.com. Nice. Yeah. Now, um, what keeps you in comics? Because it's not a hugely profitable media at all. I mean, mm -hmm. why do you do comics? Anything, most things you do in life aren't, aren't going to be profitable, I think, you know? I mean, unless you're going to work for the man all your life, then you, maybe you can climb some corporate ladder and not have any soul and be really angry and, and just pissed off. Comics are something uh, that I grew up loving. I uh, always wanted to be a storyteller. Actually, my, my first intentions when I moved out to L.A. was like every other kid. They wanted to write a screenplay and sell it and become the next Quentin Tarantino and what they asked about influences. Uh, I did that, and the script that I wrote was was promptly, you know, rejected at the, by the four or five people I showed it to. And uh, I decided, I was like, well, you know, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not going to write something in the hopes that somebody's going to let me in the door. I'm going to have to create my own sort of way to distribute my stories. And I knew comics, and I loved comics, and I, you know, was meeting artists. That I used to work at Jeffrey's Comics, and uh, finally met an artist that was motivated enough to finish a series and get something done. Done, and that was the avenue I took and promptly learned that no, it is not profitable and, and it could be very uh, detrimental to your uh, to your savings account, actually, if you're not smart. And I wasn't smart. I made a lot of mistakes. Hey, how's it going? Um, but that said, like, I've learned how to do it and how to sort of ride the wave and, and get things out. And now, check it out, man. Crack it open, dude. Uh, both of my properties have been optioned a couple times over for Mac. And and, and Gone South has been an option for a TV series. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, actually, I'd love for it to happen, but if it never happens, it's not going to make me or break me. And options don't suck. Options don't suck, and it makes you enough money to print the next issue, you know? So, uh, so and, and it's gotten me work. It's got it's kept me uh, gainfully employed in the, co in the comic book industry. Um, just taking that first step. Thanks, guys. Taking that first step, I think, is very important. You put out there that you can do it. This is the quality of your work. Does somebody want a, want a piece of this or not? And uh, people have started buying a piece pieces slowly. I don't know how much is left to buy. But. Now you touched on a little bit. What, what kind of advice would you give somebody that's wanting to get into the business? Um, well, let me first recommend a book to read. Uh, True, True Facts by Larry Young I think is an amazing book. That's uh, huge. And, and whenever anybody comes to me and they want to get into publishing, uh, I always tell them to start there. Start by reading that. Whatever questions you have after that, come ask me. If I, if I know the answers, I'd be glad to tell you. Um, you just got to be realistic. Do something that, that you can finish because if, if, you go out, if you're one of those guys that goes out there with you know, the 36 issue miniseries and you only do one through three, guess what? When, you, when it comes time for your second series, if anybody's paying attention, they're not going to jump on the train with you, nor should they probably. Yep. Um, you're going to make a few mistakes, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know, but just try to have a solid vision of what you're doing. Contracts are very important as we've learned, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no matter if it's your best friend, your mother, your brother, uh, your alter ego, if you're going into business with somebody, make sure it's laid out, everybody knows who's getting what, and what's what, who owns what, uh, and just keep everything on the up and up. It's always a good thing to have to refer to uh, in the future if there's any problems. Um, and just be awesome, you know, don't, don't, don't do the, the, don't, don't do the shit you see out there, you know, if, if you like the darkness, that's cool, don't, there's no, really no need for another darkness, there's no need for another Superman, this is just a personal opinion, I guess, more than advice, try to do something fresh, original, that's the only way that, uh, you're gonna get noticed, and, and, uh, you know, go for it, go for it, boys and girls, go for it. Now, if anybody needs to get in touch with you, or they want to know more about the Comic Bug, or Atomic Basement, or, or any of the titles that you're doing, uh, how should they get in touch with you? They can reach me almost every day at the Comic Bug, 310-372-6704, and uh, the Comic Bug website is www.thecomicbug.com. Make sure you put a T-H-E, comicbug.com, because uh, there's another Comic Bug website. And then uh, for more about Mac Afro and Gone South, you can go to www. AtomicBasement.com. Uh, yeah. Thanks, right. Mike. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thank you, America.